hello everyone let's start today oh, having conversation regarding black spring b l a c k s p r i n g black spring that is an autobiographical novel by henry miller miller wrote this novel during 1932 33 while living in clichy c l i c h y that is a northwestern suburb of paris paris the capital city of france so when he was living there in france especially in clichy c l i c h y during that period he wrote this novel this is divided in almost 10 independent sections so as generally we have uh, the division of chapters there in novel here we have 10 sections with 10 different headings <clears throat> miller dedicated this autobiographical novel to anais nin anais anais nin a n i s n i n here you can see that how there are two dots at the upper side of i anais nin who was he as when we talk of the westland the question comes to whom the westland was dedicated the answer is ezra pound the similar manner here we have the dedication to a writer an isnin of french cuban american diarist essayist novelist and writer of short stories and erotica see this particular novel black spring is dedicated to an isnin who was an isnin see what about his nationality he is a french cuban american so his identification is there with three different countries french cuban american and he was a diarist means he used to write diary as we have uh in english literature the famous name regarding diary is i think uh, samuel butler if i'm not wrong in hindi we have mohan rakesh so diarist essayist novelist and writer of short stories and erotica so as i talked that this was written during 1920 1932-33 but was published in 1936 where in paris not in usa see miller belongs to usa but he could not make this work published in usa till 1963 you can remember this very easily 1936 just uh, you know reverse that 36 it will become 63 so in 36 it was published in paris and in 19 till 1963 it was not published due to us obscenity laws initially this novel was considered to be obscene as i talked about it in my earlier video that how Miller is known as you know you can say a kind of D H Lawrence of U S A. The way D H Lawrence was taken in U K. The same was with 
Henry Miller for depiction of sex. So, <clears throat> in 1936, this novel was published in Paris, but until 1963, it was not published due to the OVCNG laws in USA. And see how this 36 becomes 63. Uh, as we remember the folio edition of Shakespeare, first folio was published in 1623. And for second folio, you we reverse that 23 and that becomes 32. So first folio was in 1623, second was in 1632. Similar manner, in the similar manner we are having here, this autobiographical novel published in Paris in 1936. But in USA, it was published in 1963. And uh, let's see what Miller talks himself of this particular work. He says, and I quote, During the 10 years I spent in Paris. So he spent 10 years there in so almost a decade in Paris. I must have written seven or eight books. So in that period, in 10 years, he wrote nearly seven or eight books. This one, Black Spring, I like the best of all. As we, uh, you know, see how Dickens talk of David Copperfield. He says that uh, for me David Copperfield is the best. The similar manner we are having here, Miller asserting out of those 10 years when he wrote Black Spring, out of those 6, 7 or 8 works, he liked it most. I like the best of all I wrote during that period. So you can understand that how See, Black Spring is a very famous uh, novel of uh, Henry Miller. And uh, one interesting thing that you will find, nearly in all chapters you will find the epigraph. Epigraph, you understand? What is epi epigraph? Epigraph is the quotation in a particular work from another literary work. Okay? And that quotation, in that quotation, the writer wants to make the theme very clear in very few words. So epigraph is always important, as we see in The Wasteland as well. The epigraph in which uh, Elliot talks of that old lady who has become that much old that she is being converted in you know dust even then she is not dying so in nearly all sections we'll talk about it how in the beginning he writes epigraph different epigraphs that is a quite interesting thing regarding this particular work so in the beginning the, the epigraph that we have and it's it's very interesting just uh, read it carefully and you will understand uh, why is this uh, work that much famous and uh, why is this work that much important. You will understand that how you know novelists, how, how they, they become a good thinker, how they, they are a good philosopher, how they try to, uh, you know, uh, you can say, direct our life in the right direction, how we, uh, you know, get inspiration through the air words. So, epigraph of the novel. Can I be as I believe myself? This is, this is something, this is the kind of question that uh, nearly everybody asks from, you know, oneself. He says, and not he says, the epigraph says, and I quote, Can I be as I believe myself? or as others believe me to be. 
here is where these lines become confession in the presence of my unknown and unknowable me. Confession. That reminds me of uh, uh, work of Rousseau, my confessions, I think. Or uh, St. Augustine. Okay, leave it. So, he says, the, the epigraph says, Here is where these lines become confession in the presence of my unknown and unknowable me. Unknown and unknowable for me, myself. Here is where I create the legend wherein I must bury myself. So how, see, see, see how this I-ness is very much there. How this, uh, you know, identity of oneself is very much there. Means should we know to others by our real identity or what they want to see in us by that identity. This is the kind of conflict that, you know, everybody possesses in one's life. Should we known to the people as they want to see us or as we really are? And this epigraph is taken from Michael D. Unamuno. This is the name of the writer. M I G U E L Michael G E E U N A U M U N O U N A M U N O Michael D Unamuno Who was he? A Spanish essayist, novelist, poet, playwright, philosopher. As I told you that epigraph is generally taken from others' work. Other literary work each story means 10 sections we have to talk about so each sections actually except the angel is my watermark so this one section is also there out of those 10 in in that particular section only the epigraph is not there otherwise all the sections begins with an epigraph taken from the respective story which to varying degrees sums up a major theme of the story so as you see means nearly you know the nine sections of the whole novel they start with some epigraph and in that epigraph a writer wants to clear declare the theme of the work The epigraph of the tailor shop, that is also the name of the section, one section, contains the phrase always mercy and bright. Sorry, always merry and bright. Always merry, M E R R Y, as we have the famous phrase eat, drink, and be merry. So that merry is here, or the merry, the word that we use while wishing Christmas to others, Merry Christmas, that is M E R R Y. <laughs> by you know wrongly the people sometimes say Merry Christmas that's all Merry Christmas that is Merry Christmas so <clears throat> the epigraph of the tailor shop contains the phrase always merry and bright and there is one more section that is called into the nightlife and it has the line a coney island of the mind When we talk of those 10 sections of Black Spring, the first section is the 14th Ward. The 14th Ward. W-A-R-D. Miller recounts his childhood in the 14th Ward in Brooklyn in New York. So 14th Ward, ward is actually the place where he lived in Brooklyn. And where is Brooklyn? Brooklyn is there in New York City. 
so the the childhood that he spent there the kind of memories that he had that the kind of experiences he had he talks of that in this particular section and one interesting thing that uh, i found in the summary of this one see actually i did not uh, take all the things i just took uh, the main things that i want to tell you that what you must remember in a particular section of this work otherwise you will have to read the text or you will have to read the summary to know the whole story or to know whole, the whole novel okay he remembers the moment when he discovered fyodor mikhailovich dostoevsky see that this is a very great name dostoevsky if you think that uh, you are aware you are acquainted with some of the greatest novelist all over the world and if you don't know dostoevsky it means you are lacking something so remember this how this great novelist henry miller in his childhood how how he remembers that he remembers the moment when he discovered fyodor mikhailovich dostoevsky who was dostoevsky a russian novelist short story writer essayist journalist and philosopher very famous for his works like the brothers karamazov and crime and punishment and nothing was ever ever the same so what does he uh, you know say he says after knowing dostoevsky the things could not remain same for him in his life so in a way dostoevsky changed his perception of life dostoevsky changed his life this thing one one should understand uh and yes uh, when we talk of dostoevsky his two novels are very very famous the first one is the brothers karamazov the second one is crime and punishment even in the time of our lectures in ma our professor used to tell us uh, actually he asked in the beginning of the classes he used to you know ask some names some great names of the novels uh, for example he talks of he talked of the hard times by charles dickens and he talked of uh, brothers karamazov by dostoevsky and he used to ask one more that he used to quote is uh, that uh, madame bavary uh, by flaubert the french novelist he used to ask whether we have read these novels or not and when he we used to say those no sir we even don't know the names then he used to say then uh, that's that's very bad of you all you know you you must have read these all till the date so that is the importance that we have with uh, with these great works so at least if we have not read we must know these names at least so brothers karmazov and crime and punishment by dostoevsky is are very famous and yes one more thing that he used to tell us about middle march have you heard its name middle march is a novel by george eliot he used to say uh if you read the whole novel you will find that you are not the same person who was there in the big before beginning of the novel and after end of the novel so this particular novel middle march has that much power to evolve you to make you metamorphosed okay so in the similar manner here we are having that after uh, being acquainted with dostoevsky miller could not remain the same and that he talks in the first section of the novel and that name the name of the section is the 14th ward w a r d okay the name of the second section is a saturday afternoon he is in paris and feels more at home there than he did it in america so in this particular section he talks of his living there in paris and he says that how he is at home in paris at home means at home is a phrase at home is feels comfortable like home 
so he was at home in paris than in america means uh, america was not that much comfortable to him as paris is now that he talks in this particular section his thoughts also turned to robinson crusoe so there he talks of robinson crusoe as well what is robinson crusoe that is the name of the novel by whom daniel defo who is famous for his mall flanders that is also the name of a picaresque novel by daniel defo so what is robinson crusoe adventure and historical fiction by daniel defo d a n i e l d e f o e as detailing a life before fragmentation and modernity see here he says that how in 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 uh, in the childhood one does not think of the fragmentation one does not bother about the modernity but after you know coming to youth one confronts these all realities and while talking of those things he thinks of robinson crusoe and says that a life before fragmentation and modernity now men can never be happy so he thinks that how much fragmented we have become and that's why we have lost our happiness and men can never be that much happy as he was there before fragmentation of course after fragmentation how can one remain the same how can one remain that much happy so this was the second section the third section is third or fourth day of spring he is in paris now but in stream of consciousness see this technique that he uses he he thinks of uh, he, he talks of himself as in paris but not in reality he is in paris but in consciousness <laughs> as i wrote in one of my memoir uh, that uh, for the first time uh, i met a uh, deputy commissioner an is officer the name of the officer was sunil kumar varnawal but i met him in my dream not in reality so here we see him in paris but not in reality in a stream of consciousness revolting against the conception of past present and future a very important thing see when we talk of a stream of consciousness why do we need that why do we need the presentation in that manner we don't bother for this uh, future present and past uh, the time division the physical time division so stream of consciousness crosses all the time division as we know as we know when we talk of stream of consciousness we we should think of uh, the psychological division and the physical division so stream of consciousness crosses that physical division of time and revolts against this conception of past present and future so that we have in third section the fourth section is the angel is my watermark here he explains uh i think this is not angel this is angle the angle is my watermark here he explains how he created a masterpiece of painting as i told you that he was a water painter as well he used to use the water color so here he explains how he created a masterpiece of painting how after writing several pages and eating two times that what he he really needs is he you could understand what he really needs is painting something original uh, this was the experience that he had the day when uh, you know he he ate much and then he you know he felt very much energetic and uh, so he want he wanted to you know uh, give some output and that's why he started writing 
<coughs> writing after writing pages after pages but he th he thought that he is not exhausted he wanted to do something more and then he realized that he actually does not want to write he wants to paint something and that time he painted his masterpiece very very beautiful uh, you know uh, painting that he did at that time he talks of that in this particular section <coughs> fifth section the tailor shop it's interesting to know why this name of this this section is the tailor shop miller reflects on his years as a young man in brooklyn particularly focusing on his father so in this particular section he talks of his father when he was living there in brooklyn with him whom he called the old man he used to call his father the old man and the tailor shop where he worked so actually this the tailor shop the name of the section is on the name of that tailor shop where his father worked and what did he call to his father he used to call him the old man the sixth section jabber hall crons tot what is this miller and a friend pay a visit to this eccentric but friendly man's family so this is the name of the a man who is very eccentric by nature uh, they are in his family he has a son and a daughter a wife and some servants so a visit that he paid with his friend miller he talks about that in this section the seventh section is into the night life miller recounts dreamy surreal sketches so see how surrealism is very much there in his works recounts dreamy surreal sketches that are not linked together in any meaningful way they are perplexing and mesmerizing scene of city and nature sex and death meaningless and peace so actually uh the kind of depiction that he has here that is very much surreal and that is very much you can say very much intermingling very much perplexing very much mesmerizing no definite proportion is there and in that he moves hither to thither from here to there and in that he talks of city and nature sex and death meaningless and peace the eighth one the eighth section is walking up and down in china china in this section miller decides france in is china because it is a foreign land and this is the way of looking at it france is the foreign country for him since he is from usa in the similar manner china is a foreign country so he says paris is china means france is china because it's a foreign country let him be with his own view the ninth one is burlesque that is the name of the section and see the spelling of burlesque is b u r l e s k that is the uh, you know spelling that he uses for the section here he links a series of memories including a burlesque show so several memories are you know depicted here and in that one burlesque that is b u r l e s q u e as we know as a literary term so burlesque also took place a show of burlesque took place uh, that he talks of in this section he says america is great why if one can just be a man and ask for what he wants and that one can find solace in one's own eternal book so one can if one has to uh, you know get solace one has to find it in one's own eternal book internal book sorry the last section that is mega megalopolitan maniac 
एम ई जी ए एल ओ पी ओ एल आई टी ए एन मेगालो पॉलिटन मैनियाक एम ए एन आई सी ही पॉइंट्स अ विविड पिक्चर ऑफ द नॉइजी वाइब्रेंट नेचर डिफाइंग क्राउडेड सिटी एंड इट्स डेनिजन्स सो दैट पर्टिकुलर डेपिक्शन दैट ही हैज़ हियर ऑफ नॉइजी वाइब्रेंट नेचर डिफाइंग क्राउडेड सिटी एंड इट्स डेनिजन्स ही वॉन्ट्स टू सिंपली सिट एंड मेडिटेट ऑन हिज ओन इसेंस सी आफ्टर डीलिंग विद ऑल सच थिंग्स ऑल सच वर्ल्डली थिंग्स ही स्टार्ट्स थिंकिंग ऑफ हिमसेल्फ ही स्टार्ट्स थिंकिंग ऑफ हिज ओन इसेंस वट इज ही and why is he and uh, for that he starts meditating through his thoughts and that meditation is there in this last section of the novel see as we talk of kim the novel by rodiat kipling you see the beginning of the novel where the the protagonist kim sits on a gun and in the end we find him in meditating position like buddha so here we find the writer meditating about his own essence in the last section of the novel okay that's for all that's all for today thank you